Hello everyone. So today I'm going to try something I've never done before on my channel here. I'm going to do a uh, kit review of a kit I just received I'm very excited about. Um, it's one of these. That's a Cadrone G3. Um, that one's from Old Rhinebeck Aerodrome. And I saw it the first time in my life when I was about four years old, 1986, and immediately fell in love with it. And I've wanted to build one ever since. Um, I was really hoping that I'd get one in 148 scale, but Copper State did one in 132nd. So I ordered that, and that's what I'm going to review. But before I do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about Copper State. Um, I really like their stuff. They they do some really cool, really unique World War One era things. Um, they started out in Arizona, in the United States, a while back, and they were doing resin kits, something like this one here. All right? And... Eventually, the owner sold it to a company in Latvia, and they continued with the resin kits, and then they started to branch out into plastic kits. So their first plastic one I have here, too. This was their Sopwith Dolphin. This one's going to get built at some point here. Um, but it's really beautifully done. It's got a lot of detail, lots of photo etch. And um, I also did their Cadron G4, which I have here, and this was a blast. This was a lot of fun. Um, very intricate, as you can see, very complex, and there was two full sheets of photo etch parts, um, even things like these joiners and the um, uh, the booms there, window frames, tons and tons of photo etch. And since then, they've branched into 132nd um, World War One kits, which I think that was that niche was started by winglet wings and people really like the size because of the detail you could put into them so they've started out with the newports newport biplanes and now they've got this beautiful quadrone i was really really hoping for 148th but that's okay this g4 is 148th and i can only really imagine how big this would be if it was 132nd i mean it's huge as it is oh i lost one of my strings there one of my rigging lines have to glue that back on later oh well um, anyway, this is the kit here. This is actually just the shell of the box. They do a two-part box. Um, in here, this is the second part of the box. Very sturdy. I have opened mine already because I had some shipping damage. I just wanted to make sure that everything was okay in the kit. And it was. Everything was good. This is a pretty stout box. It's not, not much that's going to hurt it. So anyway, this is what we get when you open it up. First, this one was a pre-order. I ordered it um, ahead of time. And they gave you a few extra things for doing that. One of them being a print of the box art that you can frame and hang up. And next thing in the box is the instruction manual. And I love these instruction manuals because um, ever since they went to the 132nd scale kits, and I think they do this with their armor kits as well, the instruction manual is built as a design to look like um, like a pilot's manual that you'd have to fly the airplane. And when you get inside, there's a huge section on history. You've got really clear, easy to follow instructions. Great pointing out how rigging works on these. Where you need to do your drilling if you're going to drill. Um, as you go along, it will give you really great color callouts. Like for example, there's radio equipment. It'll show you what it's supposed to look like, what the colors are for it. Um, other things that you'll get are like a full color callout for the interior, so you know what to paint everything. When you get towards the end, you get really detailed rigging diagrams. There's plenty of rigging on these old planes. These had what was called wing warping instead of ailerons. So on my G4 here, if you look at the top of the wing here, you have an outer panel on each end and a gap here. And these whole panels would twist. There would be cables that would pull down on one side, which would lift a wing. And this side would release tension a little bit and go upwards. It's not the most effective system, but it worked. Um, 
and then there was lacing between these so there was room for it to flex and the center sections were solid <clears throat> so when we get into the sprues there i'll show you how that lays out um, then we get to the back here and you get really beautiful profiles showing you the markings and great details on how to final paint and mark your kit some of them have you know real life photographs of the plane so beautiful manual and then you get the sprues so first we have our engine sprue and as you can see there it's really nicely detailed you got all your cylinder heads here you got your engine case there you've got your valve train and your induction system there ignition bits here there are some bits i don't think are used like this one here i think that's a holdover from their newport kits that's um your carburetor slide box and whatnot this one i don't think has the opening but i imagine if you really wanted to you could make it work anyway that's the engine and then next sprue is those wingtip extensions and i'll hold it up close i don't know if it, it'll come through but there's little tiny little holes you can drill out to do the lacing for the wing warping on each one and if i hold it just right here to the light see how thin it is you can see how the the wing is you can actually see my shadow through the plastic very thinly molded very good detail you've got your control surfaces there i believe that's the horizontal stabilizer and the elevators cockpit combing firewall cowling so that's the second sprue then you have two matching sprues this is the booms your wheels some of your struts the landing gear bogey here rudders control horns and you get a, a matching one just like it here and again if i hold it just right look how, how thin that rudder is that did the thicknesses just like you'd have on a fabric aircraft and then this one has our lower wing and our cockpit section here the cockpit nacelle seats engine controls over here more struts over here and then the last solid sprue we have our upper wing with the little cutouts for the extensions here so that the extensions will clip right on there and you'll have your lacing here just like that the base of your cockpit the outer the bottom of the um, nacelle some of the cowling pieces there your cabane struts control stick really nice detail all right that's all the dark plastic and then we have our clear parts Get your windscreen i believe this is part of the oil pulsator here very tiny sorry i'm holding right off screen there we go windscreen oil pulsator and i'm guessing i don't know for sure but i think this might be radio parts i've got to look into the manual and see what that is but really nice clear sprue and then we have our markings and the nice thing with this is because it's world war one and everything was in black and white <clears throat> no one can agree on what colors were so they sent you in your kit two sets of matching decals with different shades of blue so for your rudder blazes there's this darker blue that goes in the center of the roundels and on the stripes here and they also sent you a different shade just in case so that's what the two of them look like side by side you get to decide you don't have to worry about anyone else telling you what you think it should be because it's black and white. Make it your way. <laughs> and then another bonus is an extra set of markings that comes with the pre-order kit. So, And they also give you black or red for some of the markings because, again, no one actually knows. You can build it how you want. And then the last piece is a couple more profiles and a couple more pictures from 
um, to go with the extra markings that you get for your options. So that's pretty neat. Really a beautiful, beautiful kit. So I'm looking forward to that. That one's gone to the top of the build pile, and I'm really excited to get started on it. Um, I do have some nice French blue easy line like I used on this. I might have to go and get a thicker version, um, but we'll see. I might try doing it with, I usually use this stuff here. I have some left over from my last kit. This is prime plastic thread. It's a little bit thicker, and I find that it holds up really well. It's very durable. So it's just not that blue that you'd have in a French plane. Anyway, that's the kit. I'm pretty excited, and I'll I'll uh, keep posted when I do start building it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too much of a drone, and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching.